In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 6 class data analysis. So here's my data, my data that I have. Uh, yours may look just a little bit different, of course, because you different subjects, different group makeup, all of that. They perform differently, submit different data. But this is my data. You'll just follow along with yours to try to get uh, numbers for yourself as well. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do the class data questions. Let's start with number three. So we're going to be calculating a whole bunch of bunch of things in here, basically completing this, the mean, standard deviation for hard and soft landings. So easy enough. So uh, always do that. Average. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's also do the standard uh, deviation. This is going to be of the sample and we'll highlight those same cells don't include the mean in that all right I'm just gonna lower the number of values that show up cool now we can just go ahead and we're gonna drag that across same as we normally have and I'm gonna go ahead and delete these these are the experimental error again once we get to that last question we just do the average or the mean the mean of of them and that gives us the mean absolute error. And I'm gonna center all these just so they look nice. Alright. So we could go ahead and copy and paste these on in. Overwrite cells. Not that far. There we go. Same thing. Again, there was some thought put into how this thing was going to be set up so that we would be able to do do it sort of easily like this and I'll just add the borders back to make it look pretty cool so we can just look at a glance you know what's my peak force for the hard soft uh, landing time for the hard versus soft and the standard deviation with all that so you can just look at a glance cool now we come to number six in Excel we need to create a box and whisker plot and this is going to be of the mean power and uh, based on the landing condition. Uh, not sure if you can hear outside I have the window slightly open but there is just a you know, storm so hopefully this doesn't get, inter get interrupted while I'm making it and then I have to restart it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at mean power. We're gonna have to move this on down below. I'm gonna move it here paste our values. You don't have to do this, it just looks nicer while we're doing it. So this is mean power. And then here, here we need to set this as which condition. This is the hard landing condition. And then we'll take our peak, no not peak, sorry, our mean power over here. Again, not including that mean and standard deviation. Let me just double check that I didn't there. Okay, I didn't. And paste value. Clean it up. And this is the soft landing. Now, we'll just go ahead and highlight all of that. I'm going to come up to insert, histogram, and box whisker. So, cool. This gives me the hard and the soft landing with their median I think that X is the mean, if I remember right. Our interquartile range, the 75 to 25 percent range, and then also the min and max. Uh, and then there, if there's an outlier, it defines outliers. I think two or three and a half times, so 1.5 times the the, the mm -hmm. outside the the range of the. Uh, what they typically call the max, but still that gives us this. So we could go ahead and add the appropriate axes and title and all that. I'm not going to do that here. You can do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually we're going to, while we're doing this, we'll just go ahead and do the other ones as well. So landing time and conditions, and then it's going to be peak RF. It's not percent, peak RF and landing conditions. So, actually, we can just copy. Well, no, I'll leave that here. We'll leave it. 
we don't we don't need we don't need to copy it. We'll leave it. So landing time. Copy. Paste. I'm gonna call this landing time though. And then same thing. And I'm making sure that I am lined up with my soft there. That's good. Paste. Eh. Well, those ones did, these ones didn't. Uh, yeah. That's okay. It just, just looks nice. It doesn't really mean much. And we'll do that same thing again. If you're having trouble making this graph like this, uh, just go ahead and uh, separate everything on out further. Make You can just copy and paste this on over here and then put this next to it. Um, Okay, cool. Nope, don't don't mix and match things. Okay, so mean power. We got our um, landing time one. Soft landing had a much higher one compared to the hard. And then let's go ahead and do our last one, which will be peak RF. And these numbers are that um, how many times your body weight how many times your body weight was that peak force or each individual person's body weight and I blocked it here I should be lined up with with it though okay yep yeah, we're lined up perfectly paste peak RF same thing one more time one more time Alright, cool. Again, this is how my data looks. Your data may not look like this. But this takes care of uh, the box and whisker here, takes care of the box and whisker here, and also box and whisker here. Now, now that we got all that, uh, again, it always shows you which data you're looking at, so just clicking on it and be like, okay, just in case you're wondering you know, which chart you're looking at. Alright, now we're uh, almost ready to go ahead and look at the um, do do the the uh, t tests. Sorry, we're almost ready to do the t tests. Uh, unlike one of the previous times where we had to do the ANOVA, we had to split everything out down here. We don't need to do that again, luckily. So uh, let's go ahead and do um, data data analysis and this one was uh, assuming equal variances alright so our first range is gonna be um, let's see we're doing mean power and then we got variable 2 mean power. So our hypothesized difference, zero. I do not have labels, I did not include labels, so if you did, make sure you did check mark that. I didn't include the labels though. Um, I can tell by I'm at number three, row three. Row three for both of them does not have labels. Uh, and we don't have an alpha level correction because we're just doing single comparisons. So this is going to be um, the J. J was mean power all right cool so this looks like we can safely reject excellent what am I going into there for I need to go into here I want to go into here <laughs> just so we could see it you know that's a pretty small p-value so uh, we can safely feel good rejecting that. At least my data, I can. Um, not sure what yours looks like. Got our p-value, got our t-statistic. t-statistic. And then we'll need to do the Cohen's d. I'm going to leave that for just a moment until we actually do all of them, and then I'll just do them all from there. Let's go ahead and do our next one. So our second one is landing time and between the two conditions. 
So same t test. Now we are shifting variable one just over one, and then variable two just over one as well. Okay, yep. Yeah. No labels. Make sure to change this to landing time. Okay, that's 12, 12, uh, well, actually 11 zeros, and then we hit our one. So this is going to be a very, very small value. Let's change this from scientific to number. Oh, come on, keep those digits in there for me. See, that's a pretty small number. Um, we can tell this one was the hard landing because it had the shorter time, and this one was the longer landing, and we can always check our means um, based off of here as well. So hard landing, short time, soft landing, long time. And lastly, let's do our last one, uh, which is going to be peak RF. Okay, same thing. Only this time, here we go. All right, let's change this to peak aura. Again, very, very small number. Let's change that to number and expand on out. Very nice. Cool. Lastly, let's do the co hens D, which was the absolute value of the mean difference divided by the square root of the pooled variance. That gives us pooled standard deviation, which is what the what we technically need. Um, but that gives us pooled standard deviation taking the square root of uh, pooled variance. So in my case, this is a you know very large number. We'll go ahead and take this, and uh, let me just double check. I was at d8, d8. That just is a point of reference so that I can copy and paste that on in and get it pointing to the correct things makes things easy so I don't have to type it in again and have uh, potential typing errors. So D8 again. So all of mine were rather large. Yours may not be this large, um, but yeah, the, 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 this is my data. You'll have to interpret yours based off of this. Um, I should have this at, in the PowerPoint, how to interpret the Cohen's D if you don't remember it or don't want to pull up one of the previous PowerPoints. Um, however, uh, that concludes everything for this. Looks like I had to fix that. Um, otherwise, uh, if you do have any questions, please contact your lab instructor and uh, make sure you get, get everything turned on in. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.